Hi everyone, this is Niall Brady from windowsnoob.com. Today we're going to talk about MBAM BitLocker Management. This is part three of a video series based on Microsoft Endpoint Manager Configuration Manager version 1910, which was the version of Config Manager current branch that had MBAM uh, features integrated. In the first video, we showed you how you could enable that and utilize it somewhat. Uh, in the uh, second video, I showed you how you can use a PowerShell script to install the website portals. And I even referred to a link that you could uh, view to see how you can customize those portals. So what we're going to do in this uh, part is we're actually going to customize those portals. I'll show you exactly how it's done. And secondly, I'll show you how depending on what user group your users are a member of, you will see different results in, in the help desk. So let's get stuck into it, shall we? First of all, let's um, look at the default self-service website as it appears to an end user. So logging on to a Windows 10 workstation. And we're going to imagine that this user needed to use the self-service feature for whatever reason. So they can either use a spare computer or their phone, whatever, to access the self-service website. So we had a look at this one already in part two. And what's interesting here is uh, a couple of things, I guess. Uh, first of all, you can see the user that we're logged on as to the domain and domain username. Uh, we can see that the company name is listed as Contiso IT. We have a notice box with some sample text. And that's pretty much it on this page, right? So now that we've seen what the default page looks like, let's customize it a little bit and let's see how that is done. So we'll go to the Configuration Manager server, log in. <clears throat> and the location of the files by default will be on C, INET, pub, wherever you have IAS installed on your uh, server. And in the case of this server, it's installed in C. Um, and in within the INET, pub folder, you can see that there is a Microsoft BitLocker Management solution subfolder and within that subfolder we've got some more more uh, subfolders one of which is the self-service website so we'll click on that now you will remember that there was a notice.txt but of course there was also the uh, the company name so what we want to do is we want to change both the notice and the company name and another option so to change the company name we need to start up uh, internet information services and we're going to expand our sites, expand the default site. And you will see here that we've got the help desk um, application or web service. And we also have the self-service one. So self-service is the one that we're interested in customizing. So click on that one. And to the right, you have application settings. So double click on that. And in here, we, we can make changes. But... When you're making changes uh, in IIS for your self-service application, only change values that are on the right side. If you change, for example, company name to company HQ, uh, and I'm talking about this actual field here, then you will break it. It will not work. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to change uh, just the company name value from Contiso IT to the name of our organization. All right. And that's how hard it is. So we've changed that now and the, the changes should be instant. So if we go back to the client, which is here and then do a refresh, look at that. It has changed instantly. So now let's go back to the config manager server and see what else we can change here. Okay, so yeah, we wanted to change the notice text itself. We can't change that here, 
but you will notice that you have the option of actually displaying the notice or not. So if you didn't want to display the notice at all, you can set that to false, right? So should we try that? False, click OK. Let's go back to the client. This is fun. Uh, refresh. And look at that. There is no notice. And all we see is the, the second page, I guess you could call it, right? So let's go back because we want to customize that notice, or you might want to customize it. So we're going to set that to true again. And let's edit the notice.txt. But to do that, what you'll need to do is start up an administrative command prompt <clears throat> and then browse to the location of the file. In that case, in this case, it's uh, an pub their self-service. Okay, notepad, notice, All right? So you see I have an administrative command prompt and I've browsed to the actual folder location. Okay, and here is the text. So that text is pretty, pretty boring and it doesn't really describe anything. So what we want to do is replace it with this because this is far more interesting. So let's do that and let's paste it in. So basically what this text is saying is, you know, do not use this unless you're authorized to do so. Okay, so we'll save that and we'll go back to our client computer and do this. So we should see, yes we do. So there we have the customized uh, domain name or company name. We've got the new notice, as you can see, and let's accept it and continue in and see what else we can do. Right, so in addition to the one, two, three things that you can do on the left-hand side, you will see that there's this here. For all other related issues, contact the help desk or IT. And you'll see that that's clickable, but when you click on it, it does nothing. It doesn't go anywhere. And the reason for that is because the URL hasn't been defined. So we go back to IIS, to our self-service uh, web service. And we have here contact help desk or IT. You could change that to do not call. Please click here instead. And we can add a help desk URL. Okay, let's try this. So we've made our change. Let's go back to here. And let's refresh this page. We're back to the, the notice. Click on continue. Look at that. It has changed. Do not call. Please click here instead. We'll click here and see what happens. Opens a website. Perfect. Okay, so what you've seen now in the last couple of minutes is how to customize the company name, how to customize the notice, and how to customize and add a URL to the clickable link just here. These other three links are embedded into the, either the JavaScript or somewhere else within the code. Um, so I don't think they're changeable unless you really want to start hacking. All right. So that was the self-service website. What about what we can do with the help desk? So first of all, let's go to the help desk. Let's pretend we're a help desk user. CMO1 forward slash help desk, right? Now, I haven't added this user to the help desk, so I guess that's why it's prompting for credentials. Okay, and it's the same thing. And if we keep clicking that, we'll get access denied. All right, so why don't we go back to the, actually to the domain controller, which we're on now. And let's look at the Active Directory security groups in question. So in the Windows Noob OU, we have some service accounts. And we have MBAM. We've got these security groups here. The ones I'm interested in today are MBAM underscore HD for help desk, MBAM underscore HD underscore ADV for the admins help desk or advanced help desk, and MBAM underscore HD underscore report for report users or the ability to run reports within this help desk, right? So these three HD um, Active Directory security groups can be populated with users. So let's add 
my user to the first group, which was uh, mbam underscore hd, and that should give us access to the help desk. So let's give it a go. Back to our client and let's do a refresh. <clears throat> and look at that. Straight away, we got in uh, and we can see that there's my username. And on the left hand side, we have some options system overview, drive recovery, and manage TPM. However, if you look here at system overview, it talks about reports, talks about drive recovery, which is that here, and manage TPM, which is this one here. So where are the reports, you're probably wondering. And secondly, in addition to that, if you look at drive recovery, for example, you will see that there are one, two, three, four red stars. Keep that in mind, we're gonna come back to that. But first, let's figure out the reports thing. So remember, we've got three Active Directory security groups. Let's go populate our user into the reports uh, Active Directory security group. So let's just do it right now. And click apply. And let's go back to our client computer. This one. And I'm gonna refresh. Ooh, look at that. Now we've got reports. Huh. That is interesting. Okay, let's close that and open it again. I haven't seen that one before. I've seen many things, but I didn't see that one before. Okay. Maybe we need to be advanced as well. Let's try help desk. So... <clears throat> Right, reports. Ah, that looks better. Okay, so I don't know, maybe it was caching credentials or something. Um, here's the system overview, nothing really changes there. It's just the overview. Second one is reports. We now have access to the recovery audit report because we put our user into that user group. And remember, we have already have access to drive recovery and we can see the one, two, three, four red, um, uh, stars and those red stars mean that these are required steps. It doesn't actually say anywhere that they're required steps, but trust me, if you don't put in the info on anywhere where it has a red star, it'll complain. Okay, so and it's the same thing here one, two, three, four, five. There's actually, five here. All right, so let's go back to our domain controller and let's add our user to the final. Uh, Active Directory Security Group, which is the uh, what the one I call ADV. You can call it whatever you want, but that's just the way it has ended up for me. Advanced or admin. Okay, so now we've added that user group, or sorry, that user to all three of the active the MBAM related Active Directory Security Groups. So let's go back to the client and uh, just bookmark that. Close it, open it up again. Um, let's see, where is it? That one, I guess. All right, okay, so we've got reports, we've got drive recovery, we've got managed TPM. Now, remember, there was four, four required fields here. Uh, when we were just a member of the first two groups, but not a member of the advanced or admin group. Now that we're a member of the advanced group or the admin group, we only have to fill in two of the four required fields under drive recovery. This means it's much quicker to pull the information, right? Secondly, under manage TPM, where we had five things to enter, now we only have three. One, two, three. The user domain user ID not required. So straight away, you can see that there is a difference depending on the Active Directory security group that you're in. So if you want to capture information such as user domain and user ID, then don't put the user in the underscore ADV uh, group. Um, right, what about this recovery audit report? Well, that report is in Config Manager. And let's see, does it show up? It does. So that report is pulled directly from Config Manager and I'll show you where. 
Uh, if we look in Config Manager itself, under Monitoring and Reports, we have BitLocker Management, and there's four built-in reports there. We'll look at that in, a, in another post, another video, I should say. And under the language-specific folder, in this case, ENUS, you've got the Recovery Audit Report. And that is the one that we're looking at on the client, all right? So basically, you fill in the information that's required, and you generate the report. That's it, okay? So in this, in this uh, video, this short video, what you've seen today is how you can customize the self-service portal and also how, based on which Active Directory security group you populate with users, uh, you will see different things in the help desk. So you can customize what the self-service looks like and you can change the way the help desk works based on which Active Directory security group you add your user to. So that's all for this video. I hope you found it useful. Um, let's see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.